The Supreme Court has struck down a century-old New York state gun law. The law required prospective gun owners to give proper cause for why they wanted to carry a handgun in public. The justices ruled 6 to 3 that it was unconstitutional. CBS News' Skylar Henry has more. In what's being described as a major expansion of gun rights, the Supreme Court struck down a New York law that required a person to show a special need in order to get a permit to carry a gun in public. I think it's very important, not just for New York, uh, but for how other gun laws are going to be evaluated as well. In the 6-3 conservative majority opinion, Justice Clarence Thomas wrote, the Second and Fourteenth Amendments protect an individual's right to carry a handgun for self-defense outside the home. My reaction is, is relief. Um, uh, and, and, and happiness that the, the, the lawful and legal gun owner of New York State is no longer going to be persecuted by laws that uh, have nothing to do with the safety of the people. The high court's ruling comes as Congress works on new gun control legislation following a string of mass shootings and a spike in gun violence across the country. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. New York elected officials vowed not to give up. We do not need people entering our subways, our restaurants, our movie theaters with concealed weapons. We don't need more guns on our streets. We cannot allow New York to become the wild, wild west. The ruling is expected to impact similar laws in several states, including California and Massachusetts. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the Supreme Court. And Jeffrey Rosen joins me now. He's a CBS News constitutional law expert and a professor of law at George Washington University and the CEO of the National Constitution Center. And I want to make clear that you are not the Jeff Rosen that we heard from during oh. testimony today, who, of course, yeah. was the former acting attorney general testifying in front of the January 6th committee. So to another Jeff Rosen here to talk about the constitutionality of these gun laws. Um, so, Jeff, I just kind of want to get your immediate reaction to to this ruling from the Supreme Court today, is it what you expected? Well, the outcome was expected. Uh, after the oral argument, it was pretty clear that the court would declare an individual right to carry a handgun outside the home for self-defense and would, would strike down the New York law. What was more surprising was the very robust constitutional methodology that six justices, led by Justice Thomas, adopted. Justice Thomas has long said that the Second Amendment shouldn't be a second-class right. And for the first time, he said judges shouldn't balance the need for gun laws against the individual right to bear arms, but instead should look exclusively to history. So there were dramatic debates about meanings of laws passed in 1348, and the liberals basically said the conservatives are cherry-picking the history to reach the results they want, and that this will call into question a whole bunch of gun laws across the country. Yeah, I want to get to that a little bit later um, about kind of how this will impact some of these state laws. And earlier today, Vice President Kamala Harris reacted to the Supreme Court's decision, and she noted these recent mass shootings, of course, that we've seen in Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, Texas. Uh, take a listen. I was in Buffalo. I attended one of the funerals. We have seen the massacre of 19 babies and their teachers in Uvalde. Uh, we can go on down the list about why it yet again is on the front pages, so to speak, of um, the concern of the American people about what so we've been covering all week the uh, bipartisan negotiations over federal gun legislation, but I'm curious what this kind of decision has in terms of impacting the debates around guns. I mean, do, do you think lawmakers will feel like any significant restrictions on gun ownership that they implement could ultimately be ended up ending up, you know, being struck down by the Supreme Court? Well, it may well affect the debate. The court stressed, as it had in an earlier case, that nothing in the opinion should cast doubt on longstanding prohibitions, and then they gave a bunch of examples. The possession of firearms by felons and the mentally ill, or laws forbidding the carrying of firearms in sensitive places, like schools and government buildings, and then they said, or laws imposing conditions on the commercial sale of arms. So that means that the things that Congress is debating, like background checks, are constitutionally fine. I don't think anyone's questioning those. But there are a bunch of other regulations that might be called into question by this ruling, including, for example, bans on assault weapons, which Congress may not pass, but some states have those bans. And it's not clear from this opinion whether or not assault weapons bans would be OK or not. And the uncertainty that the opinion introduces will absolutely affect the legislative debate. 
And we were all, you know, on these days that we know Supreme Court decisions are coming down, we're frantically, re frantically re refreshing our screens and, and waiting to see whether the, the ruling on abortion will come down. I, I'm curious kind of how these two, whether and how these two might be related. I mean, do you see any sort of connection in the court ruling to assert federal protections for the Second Amendment, while at the same time considering punting federal protections for abortion um, from a federal level down to a state level? Well, liberals will certainly criticize the decision for exactly that reason. They'll say it's not consistent for the court to defer to Democratic legislatures in the case of abortion, but to tie the hands of legislatures in the case of gun control. Conservatives will respond that the Second Amendment explicitly protects the right to keep and bear arms, but the right to abortion is not explicitly enumerated in the Constitution. But the common thread in both of these decisions, if the court does strike uh, overturn Roe is this new emphasis on constitutional history. And there's an awful lot of debate about what the framers thought. And this means that it will be harder to update the Constitution uh, in accord with changing times. And President Biden, in reaction to this ruling today, has been essentially calling on states to pass new gun laws. Um, can you kind of help us understand are there going to be some kind of problems for different states having vastly different rules around guns when they could potentially be at odds with federal law? Well, this decision may bring state gun laws into harmony because Justices Kavanaugh and Chief Justice Roberts stressed that the 43 states that have uh, permits on the books that basically are called shall issue regimes, which means that you get a concealed carry permit as long as you meet certain criteria, those are fine. It's six states, New York, Hawaii, California, and a few others that have this so-called may issue regime where you have to show a special cause or proper reason to get um, a gun. And those six states are gonna have to now put their laws into harmony with the 43 states that have the more carefully uh, regulated regime. And that uh, could bring some national uniformity. But Justice Breyer, in his dissenting opinion, said, well, that's a problem because different states may have different levels of population density. New York might have different needs than uh, Wyoming. And for a mm. variety of reasons, he thinks that states should be willing to tolerate different degrees of risks and choose to balance the competing benefits and dangers of firearms differently. And I mentioned this bipartisan gun deal. It actually passed the uh, biggest, you know, hurdle, the filibuster today, getting support from about a dozen Republicans. Um, it's increasingly likely to pass and get to the president's desk, desk soon. And of course, this would be the first, you know, major piece of federal legislation that we've seen on guns in 30 years. Uh, but it is fairly limited in scope and by design. Um, does this set up so that the states are effectively the ones who will essentially have the last word on gun issues? Yes. As, as you say, the fact that Congress is not able to pass anything other than really modest uh, regulations, like expanded background checks, means that the states will have the last word. But this judicial decision says the state's last word is much more limited now than it was before this decision came down. And there's going to be huge litigation both on new regulations the states could pass, like assault weapons bans, but also existing regulations that have been on the books for 100 years. This New York law was originally passed in 1903, and mm. there are a whole bunch of other regulations that had been unquestioned before today that will now be litigated, and all this means is that judges are going to be very busy in Second Amendment cases moving forward. Certainly. A lot more lawsuits to come. Um, Jeffrey Rosen, the other Jeffrey Rosen, we should say. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your analysis. We appreciate it. Thank you.